Hey Wheaton North, Mr. Eagle here. This video is going to get into electronic configuration, which you've probably seen before. Uh, so for many of you, it might be a quick refresher. Uh, electron configuration is just keeping track of where all the electrons are in a, in a particular element or atom. Um, so let's dive in. Now this, uh, this rough sketch of a periodic table is probably pretty, going to be pretty handy to have down. A couple things that I want to point out though. Notice that this would represent uh, hydrogen over here and helium over here. They're both in the 1s, so even though they're not in the same column per se with, with helium being all the way over here, it is in the 1s uh, orbital or it's in the 1s section. So this is referred to as the s block, the d block, the p block, and the f block underneath. Um, so p goes from boron straight down, and you'll notice the numbers. Uh, after the 4s, it jumps down in number to the 3d. Okay, so for the third energy level, this is this is referring to where the different sections of the energy level are orbitals, which we'll talk about in a, in a few more videos. Um, but the third energy level consists of the 3s sublevel, the 3d sublevel, and the 3p sublevel. But you'll notice that uh, we don't get to the 3ds until after you've gotten gone through the 4s if we're reading it from left, left to right. So do a rough sketch of this because uh, it'll be handy to have uh, as you're doing electron configuration. So if we want to look at sulfur as an example, sulfur is right here. It's the fourth element in the third row. And so its electron configuration is listing out all of the electrons that it has and where they are in, in specific orbitals or sublevels and energy levels. So it has two electrons in the first energy level, and then it has two, two electrons in the 2s sublevel, and then six electrons in the 2p. Notice there's six elements in the 2p. So there's one electron for every element, because as you go across the periodic table, you're adding one electron, assuming you keep uh, neutral elements, and you're not talking about ions. Uh, after the 2p, you get to the 3s, and then you get to the 3p, and there's four to get to sulfur, which is right here, four electrons in the 3p sublevel, and so it's 3p4. Now, if you're talking about ions, you have to add or subtract electrons to the valence shell, the valence being the, out, mo the highest energy level, the most outside energy level. Um, if we're gonna, if it's a, gonna be a positive ion, a cation, then we're going to subtract electrons because that means it has less, it has fewer electrons if it's positive. If it's a negative ion, then we're gonna be adding more electrons because it's more negative. So fluorine, for example, grab your periodic table and, and look at the, look at where fluorine is on your periodic table. Uh, it, it'd be one s two, two s two, two p five. The ion, though, it would gain one more electron, and so it would be two p six. And here's a picture kind of showing that, right? As, as fluorine with five uh, 2p electrons gains one more electron, it fills that outside shell, it gets to eight in its outer energy level, which is the second energy level in this case. So we have two in the s and, and six in the p, which would be added up to eight. Uh, and then you have your fluor fluoride ion. The manganese ion, I'm sorry, the manganese atom would, be, would have this configuration, right? Take a look at it, find it on your periodic table. It'd be 4s2 and then 3d5 at the end because it's the fifth element in the 3d section right in that row but for the manganese ion it forms a couple different ions but we'll go with manganese 2 so it's forming a plus 2 ion notice that it's removing it from the valence shell the valence shell in this case would be the fourth right because it's the, the highest energy level where we have electrons is in the fourth energy level so we're going to actually remove them from the fourth energy level and, and leave the 3ds alone if it was the if it was a plus three ion or plus plus five ion or so, something like that, then you would start removing them from the d's. But you first remove them from the outer energy level, which is going to be the fourth in this case. All right. Then there's also a net noble gas shortcut. So what I just showed you is kind of the longhand where you go through the entire periodic table until you get to your element. But with the noble gas shortcut, you start with the previous noble gas and you put that in brackets. So sodium. This is, would be the longhand for sodium, which is right here. Right. Three. It ends in three s one. And that's basically what we're saying with the noble gas shortcut. We're just saying what it ends with because everything prior to that, everything above that is going to be uh, the same. So we would say it has the same configuration as neon, the previous noble gas. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 2p6. And then it has 3s1. All right, let's look at some examples. It's always helpful to have a periodic table, so have that handy. And let's start with bromine. Use the noble gas shortcut and write the, the uh, electron configuration for bromine. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and do that. It's always a good idea to, to see if you can do it first and then, and then check it to see if you're in, in good shape. You would start with, with bromine being here, you would start with the previous noble gas. So we're saying it has the same configuration as an argon 
and then an additional 4s2, and then this is the 3d section here, because we're going, we're going down uh, a number. It's referred to as n minus 1, n being the energy level. So uh, because you're in the fourth energy level here, this is n minus 1, so it's 3. So 3d10, and then you go back up to 4. So the p's are, are at n. So 4p5, because it's the fifth element there. What about the zinc ion? Maybe start with the zinc atom, and then maybe remove two electrons from it. Go ahead and pause the video and do that one. No, really, go, go ahead and pause the video. All right, so you would have this, previous noble gas, and 4s2, and then 3d10 to get to zinc. But that's not the ion, that's the atom. You've got to remove two electrons, right? Um, but this isn't right either. Don't remove two electrons from the 3d, we remove them from the 4s. So it's argon's configuration, and then just 3d10. This actually explains why many of the transition metals form a plus 2 ion, because they all, and if you think, look in this section, they all have two electrons in the outer energy level, and so it um, takes less energy to remove those than to remove the 3D ones, which are actually closer to the nucleus. Now, one more thing that we need to uh, talk about is, is the term isoelectronic. So make sure you have a definition of this. It's when two ions or atoms have the same number of electrons. Iso means the same, and electronic meaning referring to electrons, so isoelectronic. Uh, let's look at the example of argon and, and uh, the potassium ion. Here's uh, argon's configuration and potassium's configuration and a periodic table to look at. So argon is right here, right? So it would end in 3s2 and then 3p6. Potassium would go one further, so the same as that, but then, but then 4s1, right? And this isn't really the correct uh, noble gas shortcut you would, you would have argon as your, in brackets here, but I'm trying to show the difference here. Now the potassium ion then would lose that 4s1 electron, and so it would go back down to 3p6, which is the same configuration as argon. So the argon atom and the potassium ion are isoelectronic. There's other ions that are also isoelectronic with these two. It would be the calcium ion, right, because it would lose two. Uh, the chloride ion would gain one. The sulfur ion would gain two. All of these would be isoelectronic because they all would have the same number of, of electrons. So by now you should kind of know where the different sections of the periodic table are in regard to electron configuration, be able to write an electron configuration with both longhand and noble gas shortcut, and be able to identify if atoms and ions are isoelectronic to each other. All right, this is Mr. Yergler, signing out.